Blurry vision can be one of the most common symptoms of dry eyes. In fact, patients will come in saying, hey, I have blurry vision. We'll check their prescription and find out their prescription is exactly the same. And then we tell them, hey, you have dry eyes. And that might be kind of confusing to the patient because a lot of times they don't even feel like they have dry eyes. So in this video, we're going over three reasons why your vision might be blurry due to dry eyes and also three things that you can do at home to help you out. Let's focus in. Reason number one, and there's one thing that we have to understand here, the tear layer of the eyes, the tear film, is the front line of defense of the eyes. It's also the first thing that light hits to be focused for the eyes. So when light is traveling through air and it hits the eye, it actually hits the tears first, and the tears actually start the focusing of your eyes. So if your tears aren't there, if you have a really thin tear layer, or maybe you haven't blinked very well and so you don't have a fresh coat of tears over your eyes, right out of the gate, you're having trouble focusing that light that's getting to the eyes. And that could lead to blurry vision, distorted vision, hazy vision. Sometimes you'll have glare or halos coming off of lights, all because that tear layer isn't adequate. Reason number two, along the same lines, if you have a thin tear layer or if your tear film isn't there, that can actually leave the cornea exposed to the air. And that cornea can actually dry out really fast. In fact, sometimes in the clinic, we actually do something called the tear breakup time or T-butt. And this is to see how fast the tears actually evaporate from the surface of the eye. Now, if it's going really, really fast, that leaves the cornea exposed a lot more than it should, and sometimes can actually cause the cornea to haze over. And it's almost like if you take your mouth and put it up against a window and do this, it can cause little hazy areas, cloudiness, and as you can imagine, can cause blurry vision. Now, if you're experiencing this, a lot of times you'll notice that you might have fluctuating blurry vision. You might notice that sometimes your vision might be clear, and then sometimes your vision might be blurry. And if it's blurry, sometimes you can actually blink or rub your eyes and actually can clear it up. That's because you're actually getting a fresh coat of tears on there, or you're kind of squeegeeing the cornea off a little bit. You're squeegeeing that hazy part of the cornea that got hazed over. Reason number three, and this keeps building up into more severe stages here, if you don't have tears on the eyes, the eyes or the surface of the cornea is drying out a lot, a lot of times you will get keratitis. That's inflammation of the cornea. Sometimes we see that as superficial punctate keratitis, little dots or blots or spots of dry patches on the cornea that can also be quite painful and irritating can also feel weird in the eye, can cause a foreign body sensation. Sometimes you'll get punctate erosions. Little erosions or thin sloughed off areas of the cornea can also be painful and irritating as well. And if it gets really severe, if you get a portion of the cornea that is dry enough, sometimes you can get ulcers, neurotrophic ulcers, where the cornea just really sloughs off to the point where it gets so hazy, opaque, painful, and it can actually scar and lead to irreversible damage to the cornea. And if it gets bad enough, it can lead to blindness. And as you can imagine, if you get a lot of those dry patches on the cornea or those erosions, trying to look through those dry patches can be really irritating and really blurry because that's actually blocking the light or distorting the light that's getting through the cornea. So a lot of times, treating dry eyes is trying to treat those dry patches that are on the surface of the cornea and can be pretty tricky to get rid of. Now, before we get into any treatments that you can do at home, if you've learned anything new, definitely hit that like button. Also share this video for other people if you think it will help them out. Treatment number one that you can do at home, and you probably guessed that I was going to say this, and that's to use artificial tears. I usually always recommend preservative-free artificial tears. This keeps your eyes from being exposed to some preservatives that you might be sensitive to. You can also use the preservative-free artificial tears a little bit more, a little bit more frequent if you need to, and it'll still be safe for the eye. Now, if you've used artificial tears in the past, you might be someone that says, hey, I used artificial tears, and it only helped for about 20 seconds. It didn't really solve the problem. It didn't really help that much. It wasn't really worth it. 
And I actually will agree with you on this one, but let me explain why I still recommend artificial tears. You can think of using artificial tears like using lotion on your hands, but the key to using artificial tears is that you wanna be consistent with them and you actually wanna use them before your eyes get to a blurry or a dry symptom stage. Not only are you supplementing the tears with artificial tears so then you can have better vision, but you're coating the surface of the eye and trying to prevent those patches, those dry eye patches from showing up. You're trying to prevent keratitis or inflammation of the cornea. And so by using artificial tears, even though you might not feel a relief from the dry eye symptoms, I would still do it because you are gonna do it to prevent your eyes from getting worse maybe later that day or later that evening. You're preventing your eyes from progressing along the dry eye symptoms. Now for the artificial tears that I recommend, check out the link in the description below. They're ones that I use myself and also I found have been helpful to a lot of my patients. Now there are different types of dry eye, aqueous deficient, you're not producing enough tears, but a big portion of dry eyes is my Bohmian gland dysfunction or poor quality of tears caused by poor oil coming from the oil glands in your eyelids. And those oil glands, the oil in those oil glands are produced and built and made by the omega-3s supplied by your blood. So if you have poor diet with low omega-3s, it can definitely have an effect on your dry eyes and dry eye symptoms. And I've seen enough research that I recommend omega-3 supplements to my patients that might have poor oil quality coming out of their oil glands. And I put the links in the description below that my favorite ones that I usually recommend. Number three, and a big thing that you can do at home that can be very helpful is eyelid hygiene. Now eyelid hygiene is an umbrella term for a lot of different things that you can actually do at home to help out your oil glands and your dry eyes. So if you definitely suffer from dry eyes that includes meibomian gland dysfunction or especially blepharitis, all of these can definitely help. Eyelid hygiene tips can include using hypochlorous acid solution spray to help control overpopulation of the bacteria, cleaning your eyelids with either an eyelid wipe or using a device or a scrubber tool that can actually clean the debris and the biofilm and the bacteria off of your eyelids that might be messing up with your oil glands. New Lids is a really good device that can actually help quite a bit. And also warm compresses and eyelid massages, when done properly and safely, can definitely help with the production of the oil coming out of your oil glands or keeping the oil glands working properly. Now the key to this one and these treatments is to be consistent. A lot of times you might do it one night or for a couple days and not really notice a difference, but you really need to be consistent about doing it to prevent your eyes from advancing into the more severe stages or getting worse. If you're consistent, you should notice a difference. Now everybody's different, everybody's dry eyes is caused by different things and different treatments might work better for some people and some people not, might not work at all. But definitely check in with your eye doctor, find out what type of dry eyes you have, what treatments might work best for you. Now, if you want to learn more, definitely check out my playlist about dry eyes right there. I go into more detail about warm compresses, eyelid massages, doing them safely, which warm compresses I actually like the best, blepharitis, how to clean your eyelids, what works best for cleaning your eyelids, and more advanced dry eye treatments about omega-3s, what type of omega-3s, how much should I take. That's all in this playlist. You can definitely check that out. Also, comment below if you have any questions. I'll definitely answer any questions that you have. I'm Dr. Neil Gaiman, Dr. Eye Guy. Stay focused.